Hi guys. I hate saying that. I never know what else to say. Um, today I'm filming a really weird video that I have no idea what I'm going to call yet. But basically I get quite a few questions about what tattoos have I got? What job do I do? What did I do at uni? Even though I don't know like why people care because I'm really not very interesting but um, apparently they do. So I thought I would sit down, I've made a little list of things to rattle through in my cute notebook. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to chat because I don't really do videos like this and it's a bit weird but I've got a cup of tea which is sitting on this box of Glossier stuff which I really want to open but I'm not going to. Um, and also my chest of drawers is slightly broken so it's really bothering me but let's just not look at it. Right, I'm gonna shut up. If you can hear road noise, it's because I live on a main road. If you can hear snaffling, it's because there's a certain little pig that wants to meet you, who you will meet shortly. But first up, I've put like status, so I just thought I'd just go through really like simple things. Um, so I'm 24, if you didn't know. Uh, I'm born on the 1st of February, 1994. Same day as my dad, obviously not the same year. Um, I live in South London. I'm from South London if you can't tell from the accent. Um, what else? I am freelance at the moment, so I just, I'm self-employed. What else? I live on my own with my small farm and a flatmate, but she's not often here, so basically on my own. Um, what else is of interest? Um, I'm single, and I think that's it. That's me, quite simply. Um, one of the, the pets is here. Next on my list I put education. Um, so I get asked about this a lot which um, fine. So basically for obviously I went to school did my uh, GCSEs. I think I've got 13 GCSEs like A to C like nothing spectacular. I did oh my god what did I do? Spanish, business and economics, textiles and art as my four um, options and then I went on to do A levels at the same place that I went to school because um, we had a sick form there so I just stayed on and went to sick form and there I did um, oh what did I do business and economics again art textiles and art design so again like whatever I really wanted to do photography but they didn't actually introduce it until the following year so yeah that was annoying um, I think I got AA B in my A levels, like I think got the, yeah the B was in economics and then the two A's were art textiles. What else did I do? I then went from sixth form in 2012 to Camberwell College of Arts, which is part of University of the Arts London (UAL), and I did a foundation diploma, which you often need for um, art and fashion-based degrees. So it's kind of like a sort of to get everyone at the same level and just to get everyone kind of going on the same thing. I will tell you straight up, I absolutely detested that year. It was potentially the worst year of my life. I've never been so miserable and depressed. I didn't enjoy it. It was very conceptual. It was very, you know, why do people do that though? And like, it's not just a, t it's not just a TV. It's like a representation of this. And I was like, fuck off. I'm not like that at all. I'm very to the point, very black and white apparently. Um, and yeah, so I really struggled with that. I absolutely hated it. I specialised in fashion textiles. It wasn't fashion. It was way more textiles based, but not in a way that we could use. So it wasn't like we didn't learn to do anything with it. Like it wasn't screen printing or whatever. Um, you know, we didn't learn anything. It was very conceptual, as I said, um, and everything else. And it was awful. Um, I did that because I wanted to go on to London College of Fashion and study women's wear because I thought that was the equivalent of what I wanted to do um, and obviously you needed a foundation diploma in order to do women's wear at LCF it's a very very competitive course um, during my time at Camberwell I absolutely didn't get on with my tutors um, I, there was two in particular who were so nasty and really really derogatory and like, I had my work pulled off the wall and like walked over and told like oh you know um, you know, it's don't put it on the wall, it's horrible and whatever else. And it was just, yeah, it just really wasn't nice. Um, I made a couple of friends. I made one of my best friends, Jen, um, at Camberwell, who I ended up living with afterwards. Um, and yeah, other than that, like, it was a complete nothing year. I passed the course, so it was like a fail pass merit distinction. I got a pass, which I didn't even think I would. Um, my 
attendance was rock bottom by the time it ended. I was so miserable. I hated myself. I hated any work I was producing. I was completely uninspired. And yeah, it was just a massive nightmare, basically. Wouldn't recommend. Um, Central St. Martins also offer a foundation diploma. So if you are looking, potentially look there. Although I do hear the same that it will again. It's very conceptual and whatever. So potentially look to go somewhere out of your area. <laughs> Afterwards, I then went on to do a degree. I realised while I was at Campbell that women's wear wasn't what I wanted to do. I applied for it because I found it. But actually what I wanted to do was a course that LCF offered called fashion design and marketing. And I thought, I've got a business background and a fashion background. That will mean when I graduate, I can either go into PR, marketing, or I can go and down the design route. So that was what I wanted to do. But my tutors at Campbell messed it up big time. The only reason I'd gone to Campbell was so I definitely got a place at LCF. I wasn't bothered about the diploma. You didn't actually need the diploma for that course, but they sodded my application up and basically didn't get the course leader from LCF to come and view our work, which is how it worked in terms of getting in. So I just automatically didn't get a place. Um, so I tried to do that myself and didn't get anywhere basically. So I got my second choice, which was designer pattern cutting at LCF, which thank the Lord I got. I was so upset. I tried so hard to change everything. I considered not going to uni, but in the end I went and did pattern cutting. And as much as the course, was a bit all over the place because we were the last year to be taken on to the course before it switched over to a BA. It was originally a foundation degree with the option to top up for a year in women's wear. So I did that. I met my best friend Olivia, who you've probably seen in my vlogs. We went to LA together. She is literally the best friend in the world. I'm so glad I did it just for the fact I met her. She's like my, my soul sister. But yeah, so I'm so glad I did it. Pattern cutting was what I wanted to do. If you'd have asked me what I wanted to do, I'd have told you I want to learn how to make clothes. I didn't realise that women's wear wasn't as focused on that. So yeah, did pattern cutting for two years, graduated with a 2-1, um, had the option to either go and do a year in pattern cutting to make it a full BA, a year in women's wear to do a full BA, to take a year out and come back and join the new class the new third year BA fashion pattern cutting course. Yeah, basically, if I'd have taken the year out, I was in a bit of a weird predicament because I was no longer a student, so I couldn't do the year-long student placements. But also, I technically didn't have a BA, which is what a lot of degrees require, and I couldn't afford to work unpaid for a year. So it left you in a weird place where you weren't going to get a paid job, but at the same time, you couldn't do a student's job. Um, so in the end, Olivia and I, and about three other girls from our course, asked our tutor if we could hop back into the now second year of the BA version of our course. Um, if that makes any sense. I know this is so confusing, even I get confused. But basically, after we'd started the FDA fashion pattern cutting, the following year it was scrapped and they started BA fashion pattern cutting. So rather than being two years, it became three. So by the time I graduated, the first lot of students were now second years. So we asked if we could hop back into second year, re redo, even though it was different, our second year and then naturally progress into third year rather than taking that year out. And after like much back and forward, that was agreed. So that's what we did. So technically I have two degrees. I have a foundation degree in women's wear and pattern cutting and then I have a BA honours degree in fashion pattern cutting. Basically, I'm a pattern cutter, so I can do that. <laughs> I did an intern in pattern cutting while I was at uni. Um, God, I'm already on 10 minutes. This is going to be a really long video. So I did an intern in pattern cutting, mainly because I never felt confident enough. Um, and I always felt like I didn't know enough to go into industry and do it, which is partly my fault, partly LCS fault. But I did intern at a brand called Oh My Love. I interned as like social media and styling um, for about a month, I think way back when now and that was fun it isn't what i wanted to do but i met some cool people who i'm still vaguely in touch with and like, it was just a nice insight to the industry after that i decided to really concentrate on my blog so while i felt like i was missing out because i wasn't interning it was a choice between i either intern and kind of forget about my blog in which case my blog will never be anything or i intern so i can have a career in pattern cutting no way i've just said that yeah so i forget about my blog and intern so i can be a pattern cutter or I do the opposite and I focus on my blog and don't intern, but then when I graduate, I'm gonna struggle a lot to find a pattern cutting job. So obviously I picked the blog route um, and by the time I'd finished five years at uni, I really didn't want to go straight into pattern cutting at all. I 
graduated about seven months ago now and I'm, I'm a bit more than that nearly a year ago and I'm only just starting to think actually I kind of miss it and I want to get back into it so I'm sort of dipping my toe into freelance pattern cutting at the moment but yeah in terms of job wise it's going in entry level fashion not to put anyone off it's terribly paid I was offered 20,000 pounds a year for a job which by the time you take off London rent travel without even food included i think you're left with about 70 pounds a week to live on which is just obscene so you know not to put anyone down if you can afford to do that then it's amazing and obviously it's an amazing career but i think for me but it works better to be freelance so yeah that's what i'm doing at the moment in terms of like my job now as i said i'm completely self-employed i have my blog and obviously this youtube and i do that i also help out josie from fashion mumbler i do like a few of her creative bits a couple of days a week so that is just like a constant which is great for me and as i said i'm also sort of dipping my toe into freelance pattern cutting so all over the place every week is completely different to me it suits me down to the ground because as i mentioned before i've got me or chronic fatigue syndrome so a nine to five would kind of put me in the ground after about a month and yeah i don't know it just it suits me perfectly as long as my rent's paid i'm happy in terms of like aspirations and where i want to be right now i am really happy doing what i do obviously the end goal would be completely to be completely self-sufficient i definitely want to keep pattern cutting because i do love it and it's an amazing skill to have but again i like it on an ad hoc on on my terms so i do want to get back into making my own bits and bobs and also obviously doing bits for small brands and whatever else and i absolutely love blogging creating content like it's it makes me so happy like i'm really genuinely passionate about it and i think it's so it's such a luxury to be able to love what you do and i've been in jobs i've worked in retail for five years while i was at uni and i absolutely hated it and it would make me anxious and nervous and yeah so to enjoy what i do and not dread waking up every morning is just like the best thing in the world so absolutely if you can like pursue what you want to do always do i know it can be easier said than done but it's totally worth it next i'm gonna rattle through pets because as you can see i've got one on my lap and one here you probably met my cat bear who i will try and show you so this is bear he is four and a half years old actually nearly five he's my main son um, his name is Bear. I thought he was a girl at first. He's just a little tabby cross. He's, I think he's got some Bengal in him because he's got a leopard print tummy and little white mittens. I got him when I was 19 when I'd first moved out because I wanted a friend because my flatmate was always back at home in Wales and I felt really lonely. So I got Bear who feels massive now. I always thought he was a really little cat and actually he's not he's giant but he's my little best mate he's a really lovely cat as far as cats go i've always been more of a dog person but he's lovely and obviously he's been with me four years five years now yeah and he's my little best mate he comes and curls up next to me every night and he's super cuddly and affectionate and i love him he's my boy next up which is the one that i've had a lot of requests to meet is my newest son and that is mr pepe and <laughs> i recently got a little dog and that is him and his name is Pepe Bread Muktaco. I wanted to call him Bread but my mum told me that was ridiculous so he's called Pepe, Don Pepe. I was watching Narcos when I named him. He is a Brussels Griffon which no one's ever heard of but I will put the name on the screen. Um, he's not a pug, he's not a chihuahua, he's nothing of those variety. He is pedigree, kennel club registered, blah blah blah, he's a real breed. Um, sorry I get so fed up with people on the street being like oh what's he cross with and I'm like he's not. Not that there's anything wrong with that but he is a real breed. There are three different types of Brussels Griffon. He is a Petit Brabancon which just means he's got smooth coat. He's orange and ginger and black and he looks like a little orangutan he is an absolute little character he's got the most self-important stance he thinks he's the absolute king don't you and yeah he's he's very well behaved i couldn't really have asked for a better dog he's getting on with toilet training really well um he is good in the car he will travel with me we're pretty much always together he sleeps in the kitchen just so that he has some space for me because i don't want him to get sad when we aren't together and he comes to work with me he comes to josie's with me obviously he's with me all day i take him to prep for any cafes and everything else so yeah he is six and a half months old and he's my little best friend and he likes sleeping on his back and he likes chewing things and he loves my slippers and yeah he's just a lovely boy He's really nice. I want to show you his face. How funny is his face? Look at him. <laughs> what is he? Don't you? But yeah, 
yeah, he is a nice boy, it makes him very happy. And since being single, I just wanted some, something. Not that the cat doesn't, but I just wanted a bit of unconditional love and that's what he gives me. So yes, we are best friends and he's my son and that's all you need to know. And if there's anything you wanna know, let me know, tweet me, pop it in the comments. Um, I'll put his Instagram handle here. If you wanna follow him on Instagram, you can. Obviously he's got an Instagram. Okay, let's calm down again now. Just a super quick note, just because I know someone will say it. I absolutely would adopt a dog if um, when I'm in a position to have another dog, I'll absolutely adopt one. I had been a big fan of his breed for a really long time and they're super rare and really hard to find and I wasn't planning on getting him. So when I did find him sporadically and he needed a home, obviously I did pay for him and he was from a breeder. I took him and whatever. She breeds to show in crafts and things like that. She's not a breeder for money, I don't think. Uh, well, obviously they all are, but where have you gone? But yeah, so... I know someone's gonna say you should have adopted a dog and I absolutely agree with you. And the next dog I get when I'm in a position to 100% will be adopted. Um, my mum's adopted dogs, she's got two, one of which she brought home from Spain. Um, but yeah, just a side note, because I know someone's gonna say something. But yeah, I absolutely will be adopting my next dog. Last on the list, I have tattoos and piercings because this is what I get asked about most. And I feel so pretentious being like, oh, people wanna know, like, but actually for some reason people do ask. Um, I really couldn't force myself to do like tattoos video because I don't know I just feel like no one really does care about that But I'm just gonna rattle through what I've got so you know in terms of piercings most of them are visible I've obviously got my labyrinth pierce which I got done in 2010 at download festival I watched ACDC then came back up and got my lip pierced. I Wanted it done for years. I was really into heavy metal still am and yeah, I got it done 2010 still going strong in 2018 I, It doesn't bother me. I don't even see it. Oi. So yeah, I don't think I'll be taking it out anytime soon Sorry, he doesn't want to get on the floor now. Um, right, you can lie there, but you have to be quiet. So yeah, that is just there. I don't think it will go because I don't care about it. I don't even notice it. And I have a few guys being like, oh, you know, it'd look nice without it. And I'm like, well, I'm going to keep it for another 10 years now. <laughs> yes. So also I have um, my ears pierced. I have both ears stretched to 16 millimeters, which again, I've had since about 2009. Um, they haven't, they've only been 16 mil for about four years. I won't go any bigger. I'm not interested in taking them out. Again, I still listen to heavy metal. I'm still like into that and whatever. So like they don't bother me. And I think it's quite nice that I can dress sort of on trend and everything else, but still like feel like me. So yeah, I, I don't even notice them. They are, I think, slightly too big to close fully. I think that's about 12. Um, but I, I'm under the impression that if I did take them out, they would shrink enough for me to wear like hoop earrings and things. Maybe not a stud because they'd probably fall through. Um, and then on this ear, I have two more piercings, which I stupidly did myself. Don't recommend, don't do it. Um, and I just wear like little studs or hoops through them. And then the same on this ear, except one is directly next to my tunnel and one is halfway up my ear with a little hoop in. I really like this one. Again, did it myself, wouldn't recommend. So they are all the piercings that I've got. There are a few others that I wanted to get. I really, really wanted my septum done for about five years and I kept saying every time I went to download festival I was gonna get a new piercing, but I didn't in the end. I still like it, but I just don't think I need it right now. I've, I've sort of dabbled with getting my nose pierced, um, but again, no, um, I wanted my tongue pierced for a while but I never did that and yeah I don't think I'll get any more maybe in my ears but I mean to be honest there's nothing I'm wildly desperate for so I am going to run through my tattoos which everyone always wants to know about um I have I think eight now I'm going to try and do them in the right order but I forget basically so yeah I'm going to run through them I'll put all the artists names in the description box so if you want to contact them then obviously you can and yeah i will let you know and i'll quickly explain why i got them or whatever as well so my first tattoo was this black outline of a heart on the back of my arm um i got this because i wanted to test what the pain was like so yeah i just got a pretty basic outline this was done by my friend Ri, who i went to school with she's obviously now a tattoo artist so she's done a few of mine i've got a hair there was no particular reasoning behind it i just wanted something dainty and feminine just to test the pain and yeah I completely forget that I've got it I think I was 19 when I got this one number two was also by my friend Rhiannon and that is this one which is really hard to show you it is a little floral bouquet 
Um, sorry, my arms look disgusting. Yeah, it's a little floral bouquet. I wanted something, again, really dainty and feminine, and that's what she gave me. And I also like that it was symmetrical with the one with the heart, basically. Number three is on my rib here. This is a sweet pea. It was done by a French artist called Armel. She was guesting at Parliament in London, and I didn't really think about it. I literally just saw on her Instagram, so I jumped in and was like, yep. My mum's always called me Sweet Pea, so I thought it would be a nice thing. I don't love it, but I also forget it's there, so yeah, I don't hate it. It looks quite big here, but actually, in retrospect, it's okay. Number four was this one here on my forearm. This, again, was done by my friend Rhiannon. It's a little bit more her style, this one. She tends to do a lot more, like, colour and cartoon sort of traditional things. It was the first piece on my arm, obviously, and at the time... Which is exactly what I wanted. I don't hate it. I like it. I just, yeah, it's there. <laughs> That's that. Number five was my most hilarious tattoo, which is this one. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it is actually a bottom. And she's pulling her knickers to one side, and there's a little beach in her bottom. I don't know why I got it. It was a guy in LA. I was newly single and wanted to do whatever the hell I wanted. So I went and got this. I love it, I think it's hilarious. It's quite badly done, as you can see, like some of the lines have dropped out, it's very heavy and it's blown out a little bit down here because he pushed a little bit too hard, I think. But again, it's like the inside of my arm. Uh, yeah, it's there, I can't do anything about it. I do really like it, no one can understand what it is, which I guess is good because it's a bum. And yeah, so that's there, I think it's hilarious. And that's that. Six was this one which is a wrapping slightly piece of floral which was done by a lovely lady called Gabby College which as you can probably tell did the rest of my arm. This is a mixture of, I think this is like a, uh, an anemone or I can never say it, um, it's got some lavender and whatever else. It was supposed to just be this flower but it didn't really fit very well with this next to it so we extended it and I absolutely love it. That was my first piece by Gabby. The next one I got was this lemon. This was also from Gabby. I love this. I have an actual lemon plant just there and yeah I just wanted something a bit more botanical so I went for this. I love how it wraps and it sits just above this one. Yeah I really really love it. I just think it's super cute and again the style like Gabby's style is just like my favourite thing in the world. Also worth mentioning my new year's resolution was to stop being such a lemon because I'm so nice to everyone I tend to get mugged off so I thought if I get a lemon tattooed on me, maybe it'll remind me. And my most recent piece is this one here, which is quite similar to this one, but I feel like it flows, so it's okay. Um, and this is a poppy, a pansy, some snowdrops. Um, I don't know what this is. It looks like parsley or something. It's quite new, so if it looks a little bit scabby still, sorry. Um, yeah, I love this. Again, getting it in your elbow is absolutely bloody awful um yeah it was so painful so i will warn you of that but altogether i really like this arm i think it just looks yeah like it does <laughs> and i'm also going to get something here eventually and also i think something little here just to kind of fill a few gaps but i'm not going and maybe something around my but yeah i'm not filling it as in like i'm not i'm um, going to fill like these little gaps and things i'm going to leave those naked they are all my tattoos and all my piercings and all my pets and I think everything else. Um, this has been the weirdest video, so I hope you vaguely enjoyed it and now you know so much about me. Um, if there's anything you want to know that I haven't mentioned, then let me know. But yeah, that's it. I think my next video will be a Zara haul because I just can't stop buying things. I hope you don't mind the incessant hauls, but sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go and get back to work now. Have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.